Hello, my name is Mark Preisel. I'm a fellowship-trained foot and ankle surgeon with the Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Center in Columbus, Ohio. I will be discussing the surgical technique for the proximal interphalangeal joint arthrodesis with the osseofiber hammer toe fixation system. Provided in the osseofiber hammer toe fixation system is convenient, sterile, disposable instrumentation, and the osseofiber implant preloaded on the inserter with a 1.6 millimeter K-wire and a drill bit of corresponding size. Hammer toe implants in small, medium, and large sizes in zero degree straight and 10 degree angled are offered to accommodate a wide range of patient anatomy. The kits are offered with the instrumentation included or standalone implants to facilitate cost savings for facilities when treating more than one hammer toe per patient. The first step is to expose the joint. Either a longitudinal or transverse incisional approach can be considered. The soft tissue structure should be circumferentially released from the PIP joint, including the plantar capsule. Then resect both sides of the PIP joint, parallel to the joint surface using a small oscillating saw. Approximately one to two millimeters of bone should be resected from the head of the proximal phalanx and base of the middle phalanx to minimize shortening of the toe and enable a tight fit of the barbed implant to maintain reduction during the healing process. It is then recommended to drill a pilot hole with the provided 1.6 millimeter K wire in the proximal and middle phalanx parallel to the dorsal cortex. This facilitates a centering tunnel within the canal and prevents the drill bit from skiving. Drilling to the depth of the opposite cortex or approximately one centimeter is sufficient tunnel length. If there is any deviation, removing and redrilling the K-wire is an option. Fluoroscopy can be utilized to confirm appropriate trajectory at the surgeon's discretion. Next, centered over the pilot hole created by the K-wire, drill a tunnel in the proximal phalanx using the proximal or second laser line on the drill bit as a visual reference. Bury the laser line on the drill bit in the canal to ensure proper depth. If the middle phalanx is short, drill slightly past the laser line in the proximal phalanx to further bury the proximal side of the implant into the tunnel. For the tunnel in the middle phalanx, use the distal or first laser line on the drill bit as the visual reference for tunnel length. There are visual aids on the inserter for confidence and proper placement in the tunnel. There is a S, M, or L to indicate small, medium, or large implant size. This is often useful if more than one hammer toe is being treated or implant size is being used in the surgical procedure. The word top is embossed on the inserter to aid in positioning the implant, specifically the 10 degree angled implants in the correct orientation. Insert the proximal end of the implant into the proximal phalanx until it is flush with bone. It is best to remain perpendicular to the joint surface to prevent diverging from the bone tunnel. Tactile feedback will be noted once the inserter is flush with bone. Occasionally with hard bone, resistance is felt during insertion. Do not apply excessive pressure. Gently tap the end of the inserter with a surgical mallet to advance the implant appropriately into the tunnel. When the inserter bottoms out against the proximal phalanx residual head, this indicates the proper depth is achieved. Use the release button to disengage the implant safely from the inserter without impacting its position within the tunnel. There is a horizontal line on the inserter which serves as an optional visual aid to confirm proper implant depth into the proximal phalanx. Manually reduce the middle phalanx over the distal end of the implant, applying slow, steady pressure until bone-to-bone -bone contact is achieved. The implant has barbs, not threads, so it is intended to be inserted into the middle phalanx linearly instead of being screwed in. Visually inspect the PIP fusion site to ensure appropriate bone contact is achieved. This can additionally be confirmed with fluoroscopic imaging. The procedure is then completed with routine closure using the surgeon's preferred technique. The post-operative protocol is often dependent on concomitant procedures such as helix valgus correction, but most commonly includes non-weight bearing for one week followed by short boot protected weight bearing to tolerance until four to six weeks post-operative with transition to supportive athletic shoe gear as swelling allows at that point. This case example represents a second toe PIP fusion with the osseofiber hammer toe implant in a 68-year-old female patient. The image on the left depicts the preoperative second toe, whereas the image in the middle represents one week follow-up where you can see a stable press fit implant at the PIP joint 
and the image on the right represents three-month postoperative follow-up with mature osseous fusion. Thank you for watching this instructional video on the osseofiber hammer tail fixation system.